Badase Zanesake Imi Panda Kamakwande Itwangoma Kilwane Nyo Tinda Seven Zelistra Twin and Demomandi Dingal Kake Zilichel Kapungelang the sisting or quinto panels pagan yes was ninsing bombs on a calimazi camino sin in betilela may be si can city banda se and bangika zin calibala slabena majala o canyon gek and discovered bakakati what one demand is in the kaya mobland the lily and the selling chaba but anegamataya Ungas toti seso stata kuba nani kala kuba sin panda unjo kanga le kolita kai lu tu chuna yokuanda sinde zama bamba kama bala namsha ba tagiske ba mvesa ngolinta ba nukan kala zelo maspala jamara namfenen kanga lo sakia lu tu kaya kuen kamle tena kapa gokti zama shabo sanga nyango kubanga nyani sobeo zelela sio selwa obanjo banga na buntu kama liaba kanya na china sio tu sangu gokti buleba jengo bupilu palumbongo ika mwalpoyo sisto kolo mkunga pipi kusatu leno mkolo sukulu shena uzwe bupi suku benzo lono kolo koto alo niliswe lipkali liabo na inkizi wenge konzi manga wia ngoma bebe puso nja spoko alipango kukupane we corona innovating radio broadcasting solutions for our depression expanding shag theaters for this black nation they were casted overseas in big theater productions when they come back been acting celebrities to you all this was never about credit Asange bem peke tu que eu não tava confundindo o city you see. Tinha essa string de teatro imagem, from Makokanya to Kasiarsi that came back to this beautiful cultural spring. Doctor DC, now you live the cries of our mystified lives. O boca gente não tinha que tinha um gosto talvez tinha mas é melhor não ter gosto quando não tinha alem sabendo. But o man de sua calma, não de ter que amar lhe am lande, lá clean songo zinom tunes a batuk bela com bunzi, não nem pin mal capir chupir com zelis o angu pumzi. O solum chato zalum nota, bam ngi va bam não bobe ngai becoca, gen kaya angena gen chon, o beque a basale lá matuna na matuka zupule tole camala com chomo. Kaloku dalo kolo dalo shazo maglunga teklungu fume neke lo tuke lo spele lo sele tu angu tingi le linza alu kamu mtuli amkanya la kote live bumi lo sabi le maji lo bobo bu chau simen sabu sabu kubulu zinzi linye mshuzi sula and I am inspired by things that I read, uh, books, uh, going to church, um, and also just to see people around where I I stay. You understand? I'm inspired by black people. You yeah, understand? I um, grew up in uh, Kailicha uh, uh, and then I went to a primary school in Kailicha, uh, which is Elokshin, and I went to a high school again in Philippi, Elokshin, you understand? And I was inspired also to go and study theatre, AUCT. Yeah, so for me, that's when I saw the importance of education when I went to UCT and how it created Umandi Sisindo. You understand? If I didn't go to Varsity or didn't go to uh, AUCT, I wouldn't be the Umandi Sisindo that I am today. I wouldn't be recognized. No one would have listened to me, but because I went to a certain institution and then people are starting to listen to Umandi Sisindo. There's so many people who are doing the same work that I'm doing. Um, others, they didn't go to any university, but they are not recognized as Omandi Sisindo. So I saw that education is quite very important, and that's the reason why I started to innovate theaters and also to run uh, workshops where I educate other people as well so that they can be informed. So education is quite very, very important, especially right now. Yeah, but for us as, as black people, education is important. It's like it's the first thing for Abando Abam Shopa, which is white people. Yeah, but they always make sure that Abando Abam they go to school so that at the end of the day, they get better jobs and they become better people in life. Tina, when we went to a, a, a high school, yeah, we were never taught to become uh, AMA CEOs or to become leaders, but we were taught to go and work for a certain company. Who go? Mandis at Tishala means Mandis in Dugu, Fundisella, so that you can be able to go and find a job, a shop, right? You understand? My teacher never said, Mandis, I am teaching you so that you can be a CEO of a big company. So education is quite very, very important, and that is why I always say to young people, go study, go to school. 
and I make sure that I give them information that can take them to, arts, to that certain level where they dream of going to feds, dream of going to UCT, dream of going even abroad to, ed to educate themselves. So it's quite very important. We grew up in Malogishin, which is in the townships. Most of us, we performed um, in shacks, you understand that, because there were no theatres and there's still no theatres in the townships. We, can't talk, we cannot talk about Soweto theatre, you understand that, because those are the things that evolved very like late. We are talking about the infrastructural imbalance that happened during the apartheid, where theatres and spaces of performance are only in the CBD, but not in the townships. And that's the reason why we're inspired by Abu Artscape, Abu Baxter Theatre, Abu Market Theatre, Abu State Theatre, which all of those spaces are in the CBD is in white spaces. Where I was. So when I went to AUCT, I saw how easy it was to change spaces into performance spaces. And because I grew up in a shack, in my mother's forum shack, so that, that's the only thing that spoke to me. And I was like, I've got lights that I got from a friend of mine, who, Russell Shapiro, yes, and who closed his theatre, which was called Broadway in Long Street. So when I got back to Ekailicha after university, I was like, I want to create that experience that I've always seen from a, 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 a school in. You understand, for the people, and I talked to different kinds of people, different young people, and they, they were very interested. But the only problem with us as black people, we we are always running away from being hungry. Yeah, but Sifunimali that is coming right now. Yeah, but we don't set his car to go, okay, I'm going to be hungry for the next 10 years because I want to build something big for my community. I want to build something big for myself at the same time. So in the in the Shek theaters, it's, it's, it's something that I, I that I dreamt at the end of the day. And luckily enough, the first show that I did in a shack, which was called Magukanya Hall, which I changed it into Magukanya Ad Room, that space could only accommodate 20 to 50 people. You understand? But because I was shooting movies, one of the movies that I shot, uh, Shepherds and Butchers, where they came with about three tracks, you know, so to make sure Uti, I revamp and I, I, I innovate this shack theater that I've been dreaming about. Yeah, well, but on the 18th of July, 2012, when I hand those three lights, I saw the excitement from the audiences. I saw the excitement from the actors because it was quite something different. You know, we were used to A E lights uh, and sound, epic star. We understand the way you perform, but now this thing it's happening. A yo mean? Yeah, but that is the reason why I named it a shack theater. Yes, when we were growing up with all the community groups, we used to perform a memani. Memani is a shack, a crutch. In that crutch, we used to have E. E, 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 candles, yes, so that we can have that atmosphere of a theatre. But it was never named Shek Theatre. You understand? And I was like, this is Shek Theatre when I coined it. And it was an amazing thing for the black communities. And I wasn't even doing it for Mandy Sisindo, but I was doing it for I was doing it for black townships. You understand? I was doing it for black people. And that's the reason why when I started these things, I said black people wherever you are around South Africa, build shack theatres. I would be very angry to see a white person building a shack theatre. You understand? For me, a shack theatre is a black inheritance. It's for black people. You understand? Because it's us black people in South Africa who are living in shacks. And that's the reason why I'm calling it like, I'm saying Uguti is a black inheritance. It's for black people to practice their art. Ikailich is one of the biggest townships in South Africa. There is no theatre. There is no art centre. There is no space for young people to showcase their talent. And that's the reason why I said this is what is needed in this kind of a community. So after I ran innovated, um, did Indo Yemakukanya Ad Room, I decided also like eight years later, said, okay, now we have a theater space where we are performing, we have a theater space where we are running workshops, but now people are still coming from Kailicha, coming from Philippi, coming from Gryfondin, coming from all these townships, still going to town for education. They go to Magnet Theater, they go to Rainbow Arts Academy, which is at, at, uh, in town as well. They still go to UCT. So how about now I start to innovate another space, which is called Kailicha Arts School and Rehabilitation Center. Many artists are dying and they've died out of depression and, and many artists died because also they are excluded. Many artists died because they are depressed. They died because they are exploited in other spaces. So those are the issues that I wanted to bring upon with Kailicha Art School and Rehabilitation Center. That's why there were programs like Baka, which is um, 
black communities uh, and arts and, and kind of a, a, a symposium where we talk about black issues or we're talking about community theatre issues. So that's the, re that's the reason why I was uh, trying my best to innovate these uh, shared theatre spaces for black artists, black communities and black people. In 2012, I had so many jobs in the space of three months, January, February, March, April, actually four months, I was working left, right and center, did Infecting the City Festival. Um, I was offered also a Drama for Life to go and study. I said, no, I want to focus on this thing that I'm dreaming about, which is building Shack theaters, did a production as well at um, Autopsy uh, at Magnet Theatre, where I was acting with Jenny Resnick, Fanny Swayze, and uh, DJ as well. So in that space of three months, I did these productions. And after realizing what is needed, Ekaasi, which is building a Shack Theatre, that is when I got to be excluded in the industry in Cape Town, because I brought something that is needed. No one now is focusing on going to a, a town for a theatre or to experience a theatre. And the reason why is that the productions a town the Zenzega at 8 o'clock at night. We understand, not even my family, my mother and my father never saw me on stage. You understand? They never saw me on stage because the productions are at night and no one drives at home. How are they going to get back to a college? But when I started to innovate spaces in college, they were able now to come and see a theater. We understand? So for me, it was not a political thing, but it made me a, a politician. And that's the reason why I also decided to call myself an, an activist, which is an activist in the arts. Yeah, but but uh, life, life in Cape Town was, was good, you understand? And at the same time was bad. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to do something positive, yeah, but, and at the same time you get, you get to be excluded. Yeah, but by people you thought they are your lecturers, they, by the people you thought they are going to help you at the end of the day. Yes, there is something great that is happening around Cape Town, but Cape Town is effed up. That is one thing that we can all say as black artists who are coming from Cape Town. But because a lot of us, Abasekapa, we are very much dependent. We understand that we can't stand on our own and make things happen for ourselves. Jobek, um, Johannesburg, I always come out in for a week, two weeks. I've never been to Joburg for more than a month. You understand? I came for symposiums, conferences, where I spoke in different um, conferences. So for me, even the life was, was, was fast. I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I can't cope in this seat. You understand? Let me rather stay in Cape Town. I stayed in Cape Town for more than 20 years. But when I took a decision that, let me go and taste, I'm between Gauteng and Eastern Cape. Let me go, you understand, just in between those two cities and see which one that is going to work for me. Eastern Cape is working for me more than Johannesburg, you understand. But being in Joburg, you like, you need to reconnect, you understand, with other people. You still need to connect with people, Abacha as well. Uh, but I wouldn't say I'm a Joburg. No, I haven't moved to Joburg. You understand? I haven't left Cape Town, but I did not move to Joburg. I'd rather say, Uguti, I am heading to the Eastern Cape than these two cities. The programs that I had at theater, um, I had a, a program yeah, where there were people who are called tourists you understand, or guests or visitors who used to come to a theater and we create productions for them. Some they came for my exchange and I teach them theater. So it has been like an always experience. That's the reason why since 2011 I've always been outside South Africa. I've been touring around the world. You understand? And not just touring to perform, but I was touring to those uh, places to talk about South African theater. So last year I did so much of visual um, teachings or classes about South African theater and also what is uh, decolonial uh, theater or how do I decolonize you yeah, understand that uh, through the theater that I do and that has been always interesting for Abanda Bamshope who are coming from outside than Abanda Bamshope who are South Africans yeah, so it, it's been interesting I've got so many collaborations I've, um, yeah this year I've got about three uh, uh, tours around the world I just came back from France I'm going to America I'm going to Brazil again going to France you understand within this space of three months um, yeah and I'll, I'll be teaching I'll be teaching and also I'm directing a new production uh, which is called vow 
uh, Voices of Women, which is about gender-based violence, uh, where five women are coming straight from heaven to earth to share their stories on how they were killed by their husbands. So I'm also hoping that production will also tour the world. And I think moving away from Cape Town, it also gave me an opportunity to look after myself, you understand? And also to go back to directing, because I was one director, one director in all people who are having spaces, yes, who wasn't even directing productions in those spaces. At Magukai, I've never directed any play. At Kasi Arsi, I've never directed any play. But I made sure that I give directors a platform and a space to direct productions. Yeah, before now, I think it is my time to come back to be directing because I know I'm one of the exceptional directors in South Africa. I grew up at Tofimbaba. My mother left me when I was three months. She went to a Cape Town to work for us when she and her sister Waki, who is her aunt, or my aunt, sorry, we are both. So we practice culture at home. Every December when I go home at Tofimbaba, we practice culture. You understand? I've never been a church person, especially when I was in Cape Town. My Sundays were never for God. My Sundays were for theater. Every Sunday, I made sure that I have classes that I run a theater, Gumu. You understand? So I never had time where I say, Ndia Egawin. So again, after saying Ish Cape Town, Gangan, that is when I started to say, My Sundays now are for God. And the revelations and the wisdoms that I get through the church, they're quite amazing. And they make me so much stronger than before. When I read scriptures, I relate some of the scriptures to what had happened to myself and to what is happening to each and every one of us in the world. Where people might see us think, oh, to open Monday, see, they are happy. We are not. If you go to my inboxes now on Facebook, so many young people who are crying, people that have helped so much, but now I can't because I'm away from them. Manis is looking after himself. We understand? So, but that also, I have that godly heart. Did you know? There's, there's something that needs to be done about this kind of a situation. But to Chito Ukon, Chito Yapil, and to Chito Ulapa Gwenga Pagat, is Nyanya Zikon, is Nyanya Zyapil, is Nyanya Zlapa Gwenga Pagat, Uma Kuluako Ukulisi, your grandmother, Utam Kuluako Ukulisi. How are you going to allow someone at Uma Kuluako Utam Kuluako is a demon? Lamdu Kulisi. And made you to go to school. Your parents or your mother or your father were absent, but now that you are going to church or a prophetic church or any kind of a church, then those people, but the ancestors, me as man, this is my personal, I don't believe in that. You understand? So, as a person, follow your heart, follow your instincts, and follow what you want to believe in. So, I believe in God and I believe in my ancestors as well because they keep me safe. Yeah, well, so I make sure that I, I innovate, you understand, that I make something new, something different. That's the reason why I created Czech theatres, you understand. I'm a South African hero, I'm, I'm a recognized South African hero, I'm a recipient, you understand. And it's through the innovations that I have made. I own a brand, a clothing brand called Umchi, the clothing brand. And I own as well a record company which is called Umchi, the records. I own Kailicha Art School and Rehabilitation Center. Yeah, so those are the businesses that I run at this particular moment. And my dream right now um, is to build Shrek theaters. I'm not going to stop, you understand? But now is to make them franchises around South Africa. Any black person who's out there wanting to build a Shrek theater, who wants to work close to someone who originated Shrek theaters, you are more than welcome to inbox me on Facebook and make things happen. I've got so many contacts right now, people who are willing to give me money, you understand, so that I'm, I am able to build those Shrek theaters. In the Eastern Cape, I am building one, you understand, and it's going to thrive. A lot of people are going to come from the city to that one, I'm telling you. It's going to change lives because whatever that I do, I know there is God in it. Yeah, but there are ancestors in it. So, it, 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 dreams are, are, are too big, man. Yeah, and I said that sometimes I don't even want to share my dreams anymore. I'm an outspoken kind of person, and I think at the same time, London, Abandu, 
to, to feel like we are in the same level. You know, when you are here in terms of wisdom, in terms of work, not in terms of money, when you are here and you meet up with people who are here and then you come down to their position and they feel like you are on the same page. You said that I think it's one of the things that Andy Betega called because I shared so much. You understand? And I trusted people so much and I showed people a lot. And then in such a way, some of them they ended up betraying Umande Sisindo, thinking that they can do what I have done. So sharing my dreams right now, it's I'm not in a comfortable space, but there's something big that is coming. who comes from there is Umshan. I, I, I don't see why artists, they don't see that. You understand when an organization or a movement like that evolved in South Africa, Yabashal. And as a black person, you should understand what is Umshan. You understand because we are all Abashal. We all have a right to be part of that movement. If you don't, it is entirely up to you. But when I got to Echobe, um in Feb, end Feb 2021, I heard that there are artists uh, who took over the National Arts Council offices because of is in those three hundred million rent that was looted and you understand and those are the things that I've always been talking about in the industry, been vocal about. We are, but because we are the people about vulnerable as black artists who are coming from the townships. As Malaysia Puma, but they don't come to us at all. You understand that the theaters that I've rented have never been funded at all government government people can come to me right now i know i gave you this kind of a man they've never been funded we understand so it has always been a problem in the angel then i was like okay now this is the movement that speaks to me and it's 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 led by umama you understand it's led by a female but umama omdala who speaks the same language with the government tina we were seen as angry kids Ah, man, this is very young. What does he know about theater? What does he know about, you understand? So he's very young, he's, a, he's angry, he's an angry black child. Yeah, but, but right now I was like, this movement is led by people, Abadan is led by Mamus Bungile Mgom, is led by Utami Mbongo. These people are very much experienced. They know exactly what they're talking about. That's the reason why we became that force behind them and said, yes, this is the time we've been waiting for. Because, you know, we're casted out because Singa Banduan. But right now, there are elders, or elderly people who are standing for other people, you understand, who are coming from these communities and townships, and say, no, this money needs to be distributed fairly. You understand? There are companies uh, in South Africa who have been benefiting since the apartheid regime. There are individuals in South Africa who have been getting funding since the apartheid regime, and they still get millions right now. And Tina, what do we get? 5,000 rent, 10,000 rent, 20,000 rent, and that needs to stop. And especially that the government is black people. Not that they need to understand that we as black people, we need money as well to survive. We need money as well to employ other people. It's not like Mandy Steve is getting a million rent, he's going to run away and buy cars. Gone are those days. If you have experienced that with other leaders of them, not us. Tina, we care about the people and we want to work with and for the people. Um, I'm a married person. I got married, I was very young. When I got married, I was 23 years old and my wife was 19 years old. You understand? And it's been years, seven years. I've never, like, never touched my wife. Even when she was my girlfriend, she knows I was Sunday Sam. Never pet my wife at all. You understand? I've never grabbed her. I, I speak to her and I tell her. So we call each other into order. So that's why, as new productions, I'm always on gender based violence. Yeah, but, so I am one person, I love my family so much. You understand? I've got kids. Um, that I want them to look up to me. I don't want them to be like me. We understand that because what I have done and my failures as well as about followers, I want them to live their lives. But also I pray that they don't become artists. But I can see that there is a little bit of artists in them. But I pray so much that they don't become artists. It's hard to be an artist, especially with the family men, Efananam. But both me and my wife were both artists. She's a musician, this is the musician. And I'm a theater practitioner and innovator as well. But still, we, we can go to wherever for three weeks or three months, she understands that I'm working. But if I was married to a nurse or a doctor or someone else, wasn't going to understand me leaving the house for three months or three weeks. So family is, is in Tsi you understand? Family is, 
it's, I, when, whenever I feel emotional, I go back home. You understand? I speak to my wife. And I think we need people if I had so many girlfriends, I would be wasting a lot of money to those girlfriends and end up having nothing as human is in. But now there is just a space that I'm looking at and there's someone that I am looking after and she's also looking after me because she makes money with her art as well. So it's that, that kind of a give and take. But having a female, it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a good thing. And also as, as black people to, to become that face, you understand, and also to become an example, you understand, we have so much or so many failed uh, marriages around and divorces around, you understand, where about they so good, their marriages don't work. I pray, even mine, you understand, it's not perfect. There are people who have been married for 20 years, but they end up, but we divorce. I, I pray that I die. Em chatu eno am or we both die. Em chatu eno am jengu basa steam bisen sadi sabo shulwa gugu for but the female is very important. artist passing away. I lost a friend of mine in the arts in 2012, Abongi Khoza, who was the, the mascot Uzakumi during the 2012, 2010 World Cup. Yes, and a friend of mine um, whom we were together like this. We started acting together in 1998 at primary school. So we were together like this with Abongi Khoza and he died from a car accident. Um, that was the first hit you understand uh, of me experiencing someone very close to me who is also an artist, a swelleg, and um, he was not. He, he did not die of depression. No, he died of a car accident. And after a lot of other people, about my bambili swan, you understand that. Like as I was saying, this induced to be a depression. That guy was very good. Was a great actor. You understand. And thanks to Gidna with Fanny Zabalaza who managed to show that kind of a talent. Even though there were no finances for those people, you understand that there was no financial reward. But at the same time, we're able to see the greatness of their talent, went to UCT, but did not get the opportunities that they deserved. And that's, those are the reasons why I still believe right now, killed Abanda Bafananai. If he was well off, if he was taken care of, he was getting the gigs, getting the business. Yeah, because as an artist, you have business on your own. You are getting his business going up and down like any other actor. That's the reason why many actors, they leave Cape Town. Because Cape Town is quite very toxic for black artists, for black actors, for black people. We understand. So, artists dying, it's, yeah, yeah, when it's another thing that touches me. You understand? Because I know the reason why. I know now there's a young girl who just passed on, Palisa. Palisa, I speak to her on WhatsApp. She applied for three fundings. All of those fundings were, were declined. You understand? When I heard that she died, she was depressed, committed suicide, I understood. I was like, this girl said something with me. Ah, congratulations, put money. You got 50,000 rand for NEC. When I applied there, I applied there, I applied there, they were all declined. I was like, you started at VETS. You've got masters, but they still decline you. They still don't give you a funding because you are black, my child. You understand? And you are not their friend. You understand? And there's, there's no association between you and them. That's the reason why Nabo Manis don't really get funding. Yeah, so we get funding because we speak. They want to shut us down or want to shut up. That's 50,000, shut up. We're not going to shut up. We need millions. You understand? So it's, it's, it's a problem that artists are dying. Uh, may their souls rest in peace. But also may their souls fight for us. Those who are still on earth. Those who are still thriving. Those who are still striving to thrive. Fight for us. Kill them because they've killed you with depression. No, you know what? That, 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 that's going to be a problem. You understand? I don't want to mention any heroes or sheroes in my art life because everyone is quite very important uh, in me. Whether you are my enemy, whether you don't like what I do, you understand? There are people who don't like Uman is a sino, but they are doing exceptional work. Yeah, and I said, those people as well, to me, they are sheroes. You're not good. Like my mother used to say, Ndanawam em sabine, take it as if there are ten people. Five of those people are going to hate you. Five of them are going to love you. Yeah, and I said, if someone hates you, you box that person. Upagla five. And you don't even have to create enemies around you. You understand? Love a person, because they don't know the real you. 
they heard about you from someone else. And, uh, and then they also decided to join that club of haters. Yes, I love those people. That is why I'm always smiling, I'm always loving. You understand? Because I hate fights. I want to work. You understand? I want to change people's lives. That's what Mandisi is all about. So, no shiro, no hero. I love the people. Fighting is good, there are rewards at the end, you understand? but at the same time know what you are fighting for and know who you're fighting with, you understand? And, and it's good that uh, people now are starting to realize what there is differences. We cannot run away that racism still exists. There's still white people who hate black people, there's still black people who hate white people, there's still Indians who thinks they are with black people but they are with white people. They are still colors who thinks they are with black people that, but they are with white people. Or they think they are, you understand? So racism is something that exists and we cannot run away from it. You understand? We are black in our skins. This is white, this is green, this is pink. We are all different races. We are both, but you need to know yourselves. We are both, we need, you need to work hard. Tina, today we are recognized as activists. We are recognized as activists. We never wanted to be activists. We never wanted to be activists. We wanted to be game changers. We wanted to be artists. We wanted to be actors. We wanted to be directors. You understand when we started to be in the industry. But what I can say is this, the days are numbered. People are dying. You understand? So we need to take care of ourselves. We need to speak out. We need to talk to other people about how we feel. And we need to change our communities. We need to change our societies. And we need to speak nothing but the truth. Yeah, that's what I can say right now.